Thank you for uh, Agile New England for having me. Constant contact for hosting us. This is awesome. And uh, anyone that's been involved in this kind of an organization of pulling these things together, there's tons of people that work behind the scenes. So thank you to all of the volunteers and uh, to make this happen. It's, it's really creepy. I'm going to talk with you a little bit about complexity and about leadership in complexity. Anyone studied complexity at all? Like complexity theory? So a few, or chaos theory. So Arvo Perret is arguably one of the, the most well-respected well composers alive. And uh, in the liner notes of uh, one of his albums, he talks about an interaction he had with a Russian Orthodox priest. And he asked the priest, he said, um, I would like to write a new prayer. How do I start? And the priest said, no. The prayers have all been written. The only thing remaining is to prepare yourself. So, uh, as I was at dinner with a couple of my friends, uh, I, I jumped on my phone and I said, you know, I'm just curious, how many books on leadership are there currently for sale on Amazon? Over 200,000. Okay. I'm not going to teach you anything new tonight. I don't have any new ideas. The books are all out there. The ideas are all out there. I'm going to draw from them a little bit, but really, uh, leadership is about preparing ourselves. It's about becoming more of that person that you, we, we, we already know that we have a direct experience of. How do we become that person to others that held that place for us, who felt us, let us feel all those things? Competence allowed us to fail, uh, felt, we felt supported, we felt heard, we felt seen. How do we do that? So for those of you who have not studied complexity theory, or as it used to be called, chaos theory. Um, we don't necessarily understand the implications of this word complexity. We think things that have lots of moving parts are complex, um, when they're probably not. Really, com like machines with lots of pieces are still uh, not complex. How much of your work feels more like that? A lot, right? A lot of our work feels like this. So this is complexity. So how do we know? So the first idea that, that I would present is to stop managing and actually start leading. Any managers in the room? Okay, I promise I'm not going to beat up on you. <laughs> so the next one is elevating relationships. This is another kind of counterintuitive thing um, about complexity. All right, third strategy. This comes from the work of the poet David White. He said, be impatient with easy answers. One of the most dangerous things we can do when we're in complexity is decide early. Or decide from uh, one thing instead of several things. And right? not use options. When the work is done, the people will say, we did this ourselves. That is not a leader who puts themselves in the center. That is a leader who sets the stage and manages the boundaries and manages the peripheries and makes sure those people have everything they need to succeed and then doesn't take credit for it. Here's the last one. Seek to become a gardener. <coughs> Relationships are not built. They're not assembled. They're grown. To reiterate, leadership is a set of skills and a way of being. Right? That means they can be learned. We can choose to learn these things. Change doesn't wait. The moment we realize, wow, I want something different, the change process has started. So if you already know, right now, tonight, that when you ask yourself, am I the leader I want to be? Am I, am I showing up in the world in that way? And you say, maybe not in all the ways I want to. There's your invitation. And then you ask yourself, do you want to be in? Or do you want to continue if you're already on that journey? Then what's stopping you? Okay. That's all I got.